sleep well last night. You got some sleep? Yeah. Had some nightmares. <laughs> About things going wrong. I don't usually have things like that, so it wasn't usual. But I'm sure it'll be fine. This will work because for singles, you only need two. Right. But it's but when we go to teams, can we fit four here? Well, we'll, just well actually, yeah. hold the phone. He's, only, he's not going to be connected to this table, right? No, he should just need one system set up. Well, where are we going to set up check-in? Uh, we're going to set up equipment check-in up to the front desk, and that's going to okay. be Iggy. So, so Iggy, let's get you going. Okay. And you're Thank registered you. for a he's getting messed up or how stupid it is, he always does that. The way I would play is I would try to, you know, find your habits and find out where you're predictable and exploit that and this and that. He doesn't seem to have any patterns or habits that I could ever pick up on. And I was good at that too. He would talk about having a notebook in his head and he would just write down every little crazy thing that he would see. And I don't mean like crazy combos, like just crazy little aspects, like how a combo will work at certain percents and how certain things won't work. And he would talk about that and we would always just kind of laugh at him or whatever. But then you would see him play a match and it just, we would see something like happen, something like just like a, you'll see him play today. You'll see him, he'll do the craziest combo that wouldn't even make sense. You wouldn't think it would work and he just knows it'll work. It's not something that can really be explained or learned, I don't think. It's just something that kind of happens. And it's just something that don't happen to him. <laughs> That's why he hates, he hates personally playing Hungrybox, because if, uh, if he isn't playing his, uh, not his best, but he has to be playing good, he can't just wing it against Hungrybox because he has to play a certain style. He makes you play his game. That's what makes him so good. He makes you play his rules, because if you don't, then he's gonna, he's there. He's figured out an option for a lot of approaches, a lot of uh, just waiting you out. Like, he doesn't care. but. That's not Mango's game. <laughs> he legitimately runs away when people are trying to fight him, and that's, I think it's ridiculous, he thinks it's ridiculous. And this is coming from me, and, I'm, and I've, a lot of people have called me boring, but I don't even do that. I don't run from people like that. Uh, you, you saying you're going the whole way, you think anybody's gonna be any problems, or are you taking this free? Well, Mr. Mango over here, as usual, he's a really, really great player. Um, as so much as the rivalry between us, the hate, I don't wanna go into that, that's silly. There was a point in my, in my, you know, Smash career where I really hated that guy. Really, really disliked him. I wouldn't even talk to him, wouldn't look at him. Just wouldn't even talk to me like anything. I think I, we would barely shake hands after a match. My lifestyle and his lifestyle just are different things. And to the best of both of us. <laughs> Before we get started, hey. just want to talk through a few things. I'll try to keep as brief as possible. First of all, general conduct. I know I don't need to talk about this, but please, you know, while you're in the venue, while you're in the hotel, be respectful of yourselves and other people around you. Um, make sure you're just upholding the standards of the community, um, making this into a place that we can be proud of, and making this a community we can be proud of. They came over and I have all kinds of GameCube games and they see Smash and they want to play Smash. I'm like, oh cool, we're really good at that game. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm good too, man. <laughs> I ended up beating them. And then with the little kid rivalry, oh, I bet you can't beat our friend, you know, he, he won a tournament and everything. And I was like, oh, well, sure, I'll play him, I don't care. <laughs> I had my scooter, I was all ready to go all far and go find his friend and they ended up taking me like two houses down. He comes out, probably the same thing he wears now, freaking basketball shorts and a tank top. After that, it was just kind of like a small rivalry. We always have that competitive feeling. I don't know if that's just natural for anybody or just being a competitive gamer. Just as a kid, you just we we had that competitive spirit. I figured out up throw up air. He found out up throw rest. 
I figured out how to DI first. I didn't want to tell him how to DI. We kind of figured out little things and we just kept kind of pushing ahead of each other until eventually at one point he just started just kind of pushing ahead. I've played the game for six years and I've seen a lot of new players come and go and no one grabbed a hold of the game the way he did. I thought it would happen. We kind of knew he was going to be the best at some point, just the way he was progressing. I believe it was pound three when Mango decided that I'm going to lose in winner's bracket. You give me every single big name in loser's bracket, it's not a question. I got it. It's easy. Pound three is like my favorite moment in, like ever. It was so good. Mango took that tournament to the bank, but like he talked about pound three for like, at least two years. He just... You know, it wasn't even like he raped me to King, he just kind of picked them apart. And it just, the more the matches went on, the worse it got. And it was just crazy how he just kind of tore him down. If he gets hit, he's like, he's got no jaw. So like, if you hit him once or throw something at him weird he's never dealt with, you win. Like, that's it. He can't take, he can't take punishment at all. And the next time they played, it was just, he absolutely destroyed him. Like, like I said, he just, once he figures things out, he doesn't forget him. Punch him in the dick! <laughs> He really likes to get into someone's head. He got he got into my head uh, for a while, so you know. Yeah, he he likes he likes letting people know he got him. No, no, no. They made a South Park parody. You know that that episode where they're watching Indiana Jones get raped. Come on, squeal! Whee! Pretty much the kids in the theater watching that, except they replaced the footage with Mango, I guess, raping Mewtwo King in the, in the match. Come on, let's go! Why are they doing that? Just run! A lot of people at the time said, so, you know, he's, he's using Jigglypuff. How many people are honestly familiar with that matchup? Is it the character? And in time, we knew, no, it's not the character. The big thing for me was when he switched to Falco. Because people were just like, oh, it's just Jigs, it's a one-trick pony. And then he came back and he was like, no, I can do this with like anyone, and he showed it. Thirteen years old, playing my, my Game Boy Advance. I love that my Game Boy Advance was my killer app system. I love that system. I'd get good grades in school, and then like my mom would buy me the games that I wanted, and I would beat it all 100%. I wouldn't get every single achievement because that's how I played. I was, you know, hardcore, right? Whatever it's called. But um, I'm like, yeah, this is really fun. I like beating games. And then I saw Melee. I had Melee, and I thought, hmm, how can I beat this 100%? And it's like, oh, get all the trophies. Eventually, I got through every single trophy except one. So I remember back to my, you know, Pokemon card days. Back when I was like nine years old. Jigglypuff, rest. You restore HP. I'm like, that's it! I'll, they, her downbeat does nothing. I must restore HP. This move made the opponent explode off the stage. I'm like, that is incredible. I just picked up um, Jigglypuff with the puff tag and started beating everyone with rest and stuff. I developed my playstyle with it, my spacing and everything. And from there, you, went to, you just go to more tournaments. Eventually, I started going out of state, a national. And Mewtwo King came in. And I was like, whoa, Mewtwo King. And of course, of course. Everyone who sees Mewtwo King for the first time is kind of surprised of what he's like. But anyway, they put me into crew battles with him, and I beat Mewtwo King in crew battles. And at that point, I had this strange confidence. I'm like, whoa, that was pretty cool. That was pretty fun, getting you know, the crowd all hyped and stuff. This is when people still choose for me. That's not the same anymore. I got good using gimmicks. That's what I got good at. I couldn't get good using Texaco, my fingers just aren't fast enough. When you play me, it, you know, people get frustrated a lot, and I, I really, it's not like winning's fun all the time. When you see your, you know, your friends get frustrated, and it's like, I don't want to play this anymore, let's go play ping pong or something, you know. Even my very first tournament win out of state in Georgia, even then, people already didn't want me to win. I was like, is this really happening? Florida was cheering against me. All I can say is that I'm used to it, and, uh, I know there's still some people who, even though they're frustrated by it and annoyed by it, I know the fact that they do, they do think well of me.
Zelda's not going to be able to catch him. But he Man. did get him there. 85% yeah. death. Oh, wow. Good effect. spacing. Oh, he's... Oh, tech! That's a very good uh, mind game. Yeah. Wow. This is where the matchup flips around. That's a great read by Dark Rain. Oh, he just... Wow. He just goes in with the knee. What moves? Oh, First knee, and that's death. That's poor DI. Oh, he's went very salty. One thing Hungry Box is seeing right now is he's ducking a lot. That was an interesting forward B. I Hungry Box starting off really strong. Do no. you think Mango will go Captain Falcon and Starker? Mango get those combos, get the read, but oh, oh my goodness, man. that's an easy first stack. Once Ganon's off the stage, it's really hard because his recovery is so poor. Hungry Box just a really strong play there. Sets up for so much. No, that's that's a rough match. Last match, and everyone is watching. Oh my goodness! Oh, is the game still going? He's alive. What a great up tilt! Another one. Randall, Randall! No! Oh, no! The Falcon Punch to end it. Mango wins. Mango. Mangoes in person. <laughs> um. He's. When we go to Vegas, he goes there ready to die. You have to be like that's just the kind of it's just like all it's just we gotta go like we got things to do we gotta move forward and if we do it we're gonna do it right and we're gonna do it hard. I'm pretty sure I've almost died like twice. I got this lip ring when I was passed out in Vegas. I've been arrested almost like eight times just because I'm always talking smack to the cops. Like I never back down, dude. Yeah, you know, just I just things like that. I'm just I'm reckless. I don't know. Spanked me so hard. Just like didn't even try. I mean, he still doesn't even try. He was like making fun of me too. Like, why are you going? Why did you take me to Found of Dreams? Come on, dude. What? Oh my God. I was just like, just like I don't even know what to think. Like, it's the first time I met Mango. I'm like, damn, dude, this guy's a dick. His humor is so assholeish, <laughs> and like people still. They like that, you know, they, they like him. He's a people person, He's uh, he just goes out and people just like being around him. Even if they're like suit and tie type of people or this and that, they'll show up looking like a gangly little kid, like messed up beard, dumbass shirt, and like it'll end up working out. It's crazy seeing, seeing him, because you know, some people get offended by his uh, humor so much, like online. Like I, I remember uh, Florida, it was a tournament, it was a small gigabytes tournament, some like little computer place or something. He went into their thread, like just talking shit, saying, all you guys suck, I'm gonna come rape you, all you guys, and yada yada. And like, uh, I remember Lamb Chop saying like, you know, you're not gonna come in here or stay talking like that, you're gonna get your ass handed to you. And we get to Florida and everybody loves him. Like once you get to know him, if you get close enough to him, then he'll love you. I mean, it's kind of like that love-hate though, you know, like, it's tough love. Kind of like a kid, but not a kid, just doing things at his own pace, and his pace is pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Hungerbox might not have had the best time. <laughs> world's, world's best player in Vegas. This happens every time. Whoa! You barely stand up. <laughs> Poor guy. Um, we also have over here, Chillin' the Mango against... Uh, Fuck you! X and O. Thank you. Over there, last match of the night. Yeah! Get hyped! You guys won, right? In terms of lifestyles, I'm not one to judge. I don't think anyone is. Just, you know, yeah, he drinks for a lot of people do. Kish Prime is the best tournament host of all time. That also rhyme. But also, Mango. but also, Mango needs to find his controller. I found my controller! Yes! 
I may not be like as uh, capricious as he is, but I I plan things better. I I have a, you know I have I'm going to school now. I don't, I'm going. I'm getting my degree in chemical engineering. I'm I'm getting good grades. He's a sprinter. I'm a marathon runner. You know, same as same as Smash Bros. He just immediately short run crazy innovative things. I look back at what I what I am good at. Now that you warmed up a little bit, teams just warm you up. Top 10 people, hungry boxes right here, but anyway, we'll get back to him. Uh, anyway, top 10 people since there's so many good people here. Top Me, ten. I hope. You got PC, Future King, you got Shizwiz over there, you got this fag right here. You play so gay. You alright? Gayer than Mango. No, I don't play gay. He doesn't play gay. Do you ever think about like the. Um the terminology that we use as smashers. Oh, um, yeah, it's a habit. It's a bad habit, like saying rape and stuff. Can you even take me seriously when I say that? Come on, it's just... Uh, really? <laughs> I have a real problem when people um, use gay as a derogatory term. I've had <laughs> really traumatic experiences, like, um, especially being in the South. Being a girl in the gaming community, like, I've gone through all of it being labeled as an attention whore, which admittedly I was when I was 18. I probably still am to some extent. If you would have called me a nigger, and then a black guy would have called me a nigger, like, you know, it should be the same thing. It shouldn't be like, oh, he could call me a nigger, but you can't, you know? People, like, codifying me as a sexual minority, like, as a negative, that's really disheartening, especially when gamers as a whole are generally more, like, progressive, because we're all sort of, sort of weird. You're not helping girls get into the gaming community at all by using terminology like rape. As far as uh, rape goes, like, like that's one of the things I catch myself saying a lot. It's kind of like uh, retarded, like it's something that I don't really tend to say because it's kind of downplaying the traumatic effects of natural rape. Um, but I, I don't think it's as, if we're gonna categorize it, what's more offensive, I'm, I'm a little biased. Everything to me is just perception. Like, you know, those old sayings like, oh, sticks and stones may break my bones, or whatever, yada, yada, yada. So. I mean, if you let it hurt you, then, you know, it's, it's kind of your own fault because everyone is just branded to feel a certain way about certain words. But I guarantee if everybody was brought up a different way, words with me have different meanings. Nice. No, I don't play games. He doesn't I'm play games. He, does, he does high risk, I'm high all reward. aggressive and shit. He's high risk, high reward. All of your other club cancel it. There's always been, like, that little rivalry between the two. And I think it comes down to Puff. He was the first Jigglypuff to do a lot of things. He was the first Puff to win a big tournament, first Puff to beat a lot of the big East Coast players, especially Music King, because Music King, you know, was the king for a long time. <laughs> and Hungry Boss comes and does the same thing with almost like, it looked like half, not even half the effort of what Mango did. And I think that really, I don't want to say offended, but it just, it kind of did. It wasn't even that he was better than Mango. <laughs> he just kind of figured his trick out. And I mean, it was just so simple. His ranker comes from you play a very, very defensive or campy play style that I'm not really a big fan of. That's not how I like to play the game or how I like to see the game being played. Mango stopped playing Puff, and I'm sure there was all kinds of Hungrybox fans saying Hungrybox is probably better. Hungrybox, you know, he gets results, yada yada. And Mango just didn't like that. Mango Mango was the Puff player, and Mango is a very, very prideful person. Uh, me growing up with him, I know that probably better than anyone. He is about pride. Hungrybox goes for those results, he goes for those wins, that's that's his own pride. He likes he likes getting that win, you know? And that's that's probably the way it is for a lot of people. But for Mango it's different. Mango likes just showing how good he is. Even if he loses, if he shows how good he is, then he's happy. And that's why Mango can generally lose to Hungrybox, because he doesn't want to play that game. And uh you know, I mean Hungrybox can be happy about the win. You know, he got the win. He's gotten it a couple times on Mango, but it's like not to John for Mango, it's his own stupidity. He's he's better than that. He's a lot better than that. Because players like that, like I said, they, they make you play their game and Mango refuses to 100% do that. And if he did, I think, I don't think he would be losing Hunger Box. But I mean, what, what can you do? It's Mango. <laughs>
I thought Mango was going to go puff for a second there. He had his cursor on her. All right. We're, so. we're up. Doubles. Chillin' Dude goes hard right towards DOH, wants to start shutting him down, and I think he really wants to split it up so that Hungrybox can pick up oh my. Mango, but instead he ends up getting the rest on DOH. Uh, that took 10 seconds already, and HBox is already... HBox is doing seconds. work. He wants all the monies. Wow. And he gets, ooh, he gets opened up by Chillin' Dude, and he doesn't Mango even to has, to cover. Mango has quit this match. He has given up on this match. Mango has decided to quit the game, summoning his inner Mewtwo King. <laughs> and he is going to need to collect himself if he wants to start playing. Just look at him. Just, people don't realize how hard it is to play on a hangover. It is extremely hard. I've only done it once, and I got absolutely rocked. If you watch uh, day one of Genesis, the crew battle, where Hungrybox rocked me. I, I was hungover that day, and it was like the end of the day. And you know, you think I would have like a clean eight hours to sober up or whatever, get off the hangover, but no. I've seen him. He'll drink till he passes out, blacks out, and I've I've never gotten that drunk. I'm like, he does that constantly at tournaments. But I mean, he's so good that he'll <laughs> make it happen. On to game four, two one in favor of Fox and Peach, Mango and Doh. Survive all that. Hunger he did a good job. Hungerbox's survival is the key right now for, yeah, he can, for him. He and cannot afford to die. As they are, it's significantly oh, more Mango believable. Mango with a big mistake, almost dying oh, for and it. Crazy pinball bounce on DOH. He gets the uh, oh, so dash attack him. gimp. He doesn't get the edge. Hungerbox still in it. Hungerbox with the save with that down air. He gets Mango right out of the air. Great job. That could have been And the bad. bomb. He threw <laughs> No. Oh, wait. Nice forward air. This is still possible for DOH here. DOH can, do it. can he win the 2v1? He just needs to pick up a good enough oh, chill. Him. Oh he him up. my god. That's it. DOH it's over. wins doubles. Wins the 2v1. DOH. It. Double oh mango. Oh. A magnificent work from DOH bringing it home for Mango. We're going to relaunch with singles here very, very soon. Uh, we're going to take about five minutes. All right, the rules for this. If you play during the bracket, you start with the set count that you were at during the bracket. So if you were up 2 0, if you won 2 0 against somebody, you started 2 0, the other person has the counter set. So, on the stage, we are going to have a continuation set to finish. There are certain people I feel like encapsulate the emotion or the feeling behind a character. You have Kage with Ganon. And then you have Dark Rain with Falcon. He doesn't go to too many events nowadays. Um, he's still just such a strong player, period. People shouldn't be surprised with how he performs. The arena is wrapped. Everybody is watching this. They aren't turning to watch other pools. There are a couple jerks now, over there in the corner playing friendlies. They don't matter. I know they played earlier, and Mango decided to falcon ditto him. And he's going to it. He's going to it. He can hear the cheers in the crowd. I'm about as excited as it can be. So they've struck to Dreamland. A very good Falcon stage. Very good for this Ditto right here. A lot um, of room. And Mango player one, Dark Rain. Dark Rain is usual black uh, and player four. Gets out of the Mango pressure. Nice spacing. Weaves around him. Gets back to center stage. Mango clipping him. Gets the throw. Does he follow him? He does not. Anticipates attack in place. Dark Rain tries to go for the jab. Regrab doesn't quite work. Mango jumps out goes for the down air. These guys are smart. They aren't reading each other's techs yet. Neither of them have picked up. And Dark, Dark Rain, Rain, he sees through the up air, but then he fast falls after the air dodge. Oh, oh. Mango oh, stage Rain spikes him with a back tech. air. Could have survived, could have extended it, but he, he just didn't believe it would happen. Falconville. Oh, it gets Mango off there. Gets him with a down air. Dark, Dark Rain wins game two. Through. Oh, Mango going right at him this time. And, ooh, Dark Rain picking up good up airs, but not quite able to link it into something solid. 
Oh, oh big knee. knee! Another knee! Into knee. The greatest combo. Adam. Into <laughs> knee. Decides to go for the grab. He's on his shield. Oh, wow. Him. Great read by Dark Rain. Knee to the groin. That's Had not your one. purse. That doesn't belong to you. <laughs> Power shields at neutral layer gets the gentleman, but Mango Crouch cancels into a down tilt. He's gonna Excellent get him there. Excellent on the tech chase. They call this combo video Mind Reader for a reason. Oh! He does it again. He does not care what Mango thinks. Mango hits him with the backer, hits the ref, was shielded. He's gonna kill him right there! Combo Dark Dark Rain. Rain takes it. He's up three stock to one. 55%. Mango kills him. Mango himself. quits on that match, concedes to Dark Rain. Amazing stuff. You won't see him in his full potential unless you're like playing in the room and you make him mad. You make him mad, he'll go all out. And right now, Mango is getting booed by the crowd. <laughs> he flips them off for good measure. They, goes right back, they go right back to Dreamland. Last time this right happened. Back. This is Pride. Mango has this grasp that can't be taught. It's not something that comes with time. It's something you have to be born with. Mango is awake right now. How does he think so differently about this game? And I, I just don't know. He is the natural. Even I'm, even I want him to win when I'm staying with someone else. Mango gets the final knee, puts that final nail. The Falcon Dittos. Oh my God. Absolutely nuts. <laughs> and two of the sets people will remember from this weekend are the two sets that these guys played. He's completely ripped it open, right? He's already there. He's, he is the new deep, right? That is great. That is art and it's and another self, watching someone like Mango be so willing so doing such risky things and technical things and being consistently like proven that he can do it every single time it's it's like wow i have full respect for him as a player oh yeah i don't know if he doesn't like me but as far as i can tell i think we're on better terms now i can understand if he still doesn't you know appreciate me as a player because i understand where he's coming from i do the way i play is very frustrating but I had nothing but the utmost respect for him because he's taking the game to a new level. And I can't really be mad at someone who's done that to the game I love so much. That's that last stock. Not likely to get a gimp. Oh, but he almost. gets that serious combo. Kel's really showing that he's got good out of shield shine. Oh, wow. Mango's saying he doesn't <laughs> care. <laughs> there, Hungry Box is probably the scariest edge guard or species there is. Forward smash is the other way, and somehow it makes him dodge. That's the mango effect. Ooh, and I'll throw a rest and finish out the set. Great job by Hungrybox. Well, and the forward smash. The forward smash. Axe takes third place. FC 10. What will happen in the next minute? How will I react if I win? And how will that feel like if I lose? It's like riding a bike for the first time and realizing you're finally getting it or just falling off and getting more hurt than you ever have. The Kishes have been running a really tight ship here. I have no doubt that they've been tracking the pool's results and making sure that things happened the way they did. I don't believe it is a coincidence whatsoever that the match for third and fourth place just happened. Absolutely. And we're about to get the match for first and second. Absolutely. They've been really smart in choosing their matches. And here we go. Grand Finals. Mango Fox, always a favorite against Floaties. Always uses it against Hungry Box. Hungry Box, excellent at the Fox matchup. Mango, excellent at the Everybody matchup. Exactly. Excellent Crouch Cancel tech. Oh, misses it. Box misses the rest. Hits him with a forward smash instead. Knew it was up smash wasn't going to kill. Decided to keep him nearby. It's entirely possible that's what he wanted to do. Mango is one kill. of the few people, one of the few foxes that can connect with up throw up air against Hungry Box. He gets the timing right and he accounts for the possibility of that smash DI when he positions it. His shield pressure is insane. Back air shine, back air shine. Slowly whittling down that shield, trying to get Jigglypuff's ears or whatever gets exposed on, under that. Gets him again. Gets another, another stock. And this time he has the boost of that other platform. 
there are a lot of cases where Mango would say, no, I'm not going to use just the most efficient option, but he hates fighting Jigglypuff. And he really doesn't, he's not a fan of H-Box. That's good. So he's yeah. willing to make the exception just because of stuff like that. <laughs> Even though, funny story, he used to do it to people all the time. Exactly, I was about to say, that's the irony. He started as a puff. Oh, he gets Mango off stage, but Mango keeps himself close to the ledge. Gets the back air, that should be the stock. Mango with a pretty dominating performance for game one. Mango gets the neutral air. He's always just that little bit faster with his aerials than other players. That's how when he played Axe, he was able to interrupt so much of his Pika stuff compared to Esfat who got hit by most of it. It's just that Mango thing. Mango might have lived, but he wouldn't have been back in time. And oh, there we go. H-Box. That's the puff stuff that Hungrybox is needing. Uh oh, and I thought yeah. he was gonna try to grab him there. Right oh, now, well. Mango's in that mode. He doesn't care where H-Box goes right now. He's gonna try and hunt him down. He wants him dead. Oh, went for the grab there. He really wanted to just finish it with another up air. Nice rest by Hungrybox. Wait Absolutely. To watch for the tech, sees it's a miss, and because he's so prepared, he's able to react. And they go to final destination. H-Box does a jab there, which really surprises me. He's messing up right now on his execution. A nice back air from him. That slight up angle sends Fox straight into the puff back air. And then puff right into the Fox back air. H-Box has been doing some really strange things. He whiffed two up smashes straight and immediately got punished for it. And for some reason, he tried to grab Mango while Mango was jumping around three times straight. Yeah, I don't understand I don't, what's going on with H-Box right now. He might be having finger flubs, or he's just really, he's just panicking. It's it looks like it right now. Honestly, it, it does. And Mango is at tournament point right now. He, if he, he takes this, he's the champion. At least. He's just demonstrating. He knows where to put his aerials so that Hungrybox crashes into him. And he knows how to weave around Hungrybox's typical style of spacing. And he manages to get him with that again. I honestly thought Battlefield was a great stage for Mango in their first game. I'm not sure about this counter pick. Needs to keep his face to the center of the stage, but he needs to have his hits going. Oh! He didn't get the jump to get the second aerial. It's entirely possible it wouldn't have connected, but the mistake... Oh, he there. gets him! Oh, the mango head landed on the stage. Gets he him again. All the right up B, Ang. All the right ways to follow oh. his up B. Mango gets a little turnaround, and now it's at a point Great where it's absolutely anybody's game. No clear advantage. Hbox is back off the stage. He's trying to recover here. Mango misses with the back air. Hbox catches him. Oh, oh a sudden forward B. He doesn't hesitate to do those. And he's going out there to pick up a shine spike, even though he doesn't really need to do that. Oh, misses that up right. Gets him with the back air. Mango does it. Mango is crowned the champion of Melee FC here in South Bend, Indiana. Mango manages to defeat Hungry Box. Disappointed look on his face. Really yeah. downcast. Wow. He's. Congratulations to Mango, champion of FC Legacy. There's just two. It was the last day of the event, I'm pretty sure. And they told everyone to clear the venue, get out of the venue, and go into this field. It's huge open field. Weather was beautiful also. California, great weather. I'm jealous of California. And we all outside. This is the time when me and Mango still hate each other, but that's not really important. And uh, well, it is kind of important because people are playing tag, right? Just tag, oh, running around because we have nothing better to do, right? There's like four people outside. And at one point, I got tagged and I walked up to Mango and the whole crowd's going, oh, everyone's like, what's going on? So I tag him, but he's like, nah. I'm like, okay, whatever. But you know, I'm getting into the, uh, the physical, like, we're like moving around. We're having fun. Let's play a game. Ben! There goes Ben! and just a stampede of melee players, intertwined with brawl players, intertwined with spectators, just not knowing what's going on, but having a blast because of it. <laughs> and see, that was great. Like, how, how nice is that to, you know, finally put the controller down and really show like, hey, we're all human beings and we're all good people too. Good, good people who know how to fun. While I was just looking at the game unfolding, I looked around, you know, I see 
I see people smash this with their friends, you know, these guys, some guys carpooled here, some guys flew here, you know, together they're sitting down eating some Chipotle, some guys are eating in and out they're just talking, you know, laughing, they're smiling, you see that, you see that smile, it's just like, some, for some people, these tournaments, they're an escape. Oh, shit. I walk in somewhere and I, I feel respect and it's really nice. Now I didn't really get that in like middle school or you know sometimes high school and it's just like it's really been a confidence booster for me. It's really developed me as a person, this whole tournament scene. Really grateful for it. I don't know how it would have turned out without it to be honest and uh, really glad to have met even the ones I did. Hopefully I can meet a thousand more and get more Facebook friends. <laughs> but yeah. That's that. $50,000 and we're not done. Like that's, that's amazing to me. Our motto is probably one of the best things that's ever happened for this game. Since he didn't put in the effort, he didn't try, it's always gonna be that question. Maybe you could turn up now. Like they're always begging you for you to come back. Like they miss you, you know? You should really just come back and represent yourself. It doesn't matter if you feel bad anymore. Being described as maniacs, not a bad thing at all. I take it as a compliment. The whole thing? The whole thing. A lot of our friends growing up got into, you know, tagging, gang activities, a lot of drinking and partying young. Playing Smash, we stayed away from that on the weekends. We'd go to school and then come the weekend, we, you know, we'd go to tournaments. Yeah, I probably, if I didn't play games, I probably would have been Smoji Gangster or something. Probably, yeah, actually, yeah. If I didn't play Melee, Melee helped me out a lot with that. The whole night, Mango was talking about fighting, so he... He's like, all right, let's do it. We like go outside. Apparently he said only body shots, but I don't remember this. We're fighting and he's like running around like a little girl, like throwing punches. I'm just like, what are you doing, dude? And I just like sock him right in the face. Oh! Oh! He's like, he's like, what the hell, dude? Like, it's like, why you sucker punch me? I'm like, what? What are you talking about, dude? He's just like so mad. And then after that, you know, we were like, we made up. We just, uh, we just got butt naked and like jumped in the pool and went skinny dipping. So.